Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be talking about variadic templates. All right, so there may be situations where we have, you know, a variable number of inputs to a function, right? And if we have a variable number of inputs, how do we do a, uh, a templated, you know, function, uh, let's say, uh, with a variable number of inputs, right? So that's what variadic templates, and that's what we're going to cover today. All right, so uh, the first thing is this idea of having a variable number of inputs. Right, so uh, you know, over here we'll have this uh, template parameter pack. Right, so inside of our template itself, normally we do, you know, as many types as we want. Uh, but in this uh, in this case, right, because we have a variable number of inputs, we end up doing this uh, type name and then this three dots called an ellipsis, uh, and then whatever name we want after it. Right, so we'll just say args. Right, and so this type name ellipsis args. Uh, this is just a template parameter pack. Uh, and then down here inside of our function itself, so this args dot 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 args um, in, as an argument. So this is called a function parameter pack, right? So just like being a variable number of functions, right? That means we'll need, you know, in this case, a variable number of uh, template parameters as well. So in this case, right? Um, so we can actually use a, a recursive call to unpack all of these arguments. So if we don't know uh, how many arguments we're going to have passed in, how do we make sure that, you know, in this case, um, we, we need to make sure that you know, if we're not passing in you know, the number of arguments uh, inside of this function, uh, and you know, sometimes just for programmability's sake, you know, we like to just call you know, a function with some number of arguments and really not worry about you know, how many arguments it's going to be called with. Uh, we'd like to be, to be very flexible, right? Uh, that way, if we're using it in different parts of our code, we don't have to constantly be looking up a signature, right? So we can make it a little more robust. So in this case, we can unpack it using these recursive calls, All right? So the first thing we'll do is it'll return first plus, and then we'll call adder again on args, right? So in this case, first, right? So when we call adder, right, it'll take two things, right? It'll take um, the first argument, right? So we'll kind of peel that one off, and then it will call uh, this function again, adder, with two arguments, right? So it'll call it with uh, args again. But again, um, this will only be from the second element or the second argument. So the first argument is just called first. So in this case, uh, when we call it with this int sum, we call it with five integers. So this one will be first, and then the rest of it in that first call will be the rest of the argument. So it'll be two, three, four, five. And the next time it gets called, uh, it'll peel off the two now, and then it'll peel off the three, and then the four. And then we're going to be left with just a single argument left. Now with the single argument left, that's why we have this uh, you know, this is our, you can consider this uh, our base case for a recursive call, right? And this will just return that last single argument. So at the end of the day, it'll peel off all of these arguments one by one, and it will add them together, right? Uh, and that's what this first is. So it'll end up returning that. But the nice thing about this is that, um, or with variadic templates is, you know, just like we can have, uh, as we showed right here, right, a function parameter pack. So we can have a variable number of arguments in a function. We can have we can you know do this with multiple types. So we'll show it off with some very simple types like integers and floats, but we can do it with more complicated things uh, as well. Like in this case, as long as it supports you know this addition operator, uh, we can also do it with strings, right? And we'll concatenate the strings together. So uh, let's go ahead and see how this looks. So we'll go ahead and uh, do G plus plus set the standard equal to C plus plus eleven. Then we'll our input file and our output variadic templates. And let's run it. So, right, so we add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 together, we get 15. Then we add 1.5, 2.5, all the way to 4.5, and we get 17.5. So this is with floating points. And as you can see, you know, back in this example, right, we had uh, three different strings right here. So uh, one that says just this, one that says does, and then the last one says concatenation. And then when it gets printed out at the very end, it says this does concatenation, right? So. You know, it gives us some flexibility there, but you know, sometimes it's important to also visualize, you know, how the calls look to each of these functions, right? So you can use this macro um, called uh, pretty function, right? And this will actually print out uh, how this function was called, uh, so the function signature, right? So we'll we'll go ahead and uncomment that from these two functions, and we'll go ahead and recompile this code and see how it looks, right? So let's go ahead and G plus plus again. Right, and now let's run it. All right, so as we can see here, uh, we're, we're calling uh, this adder function, and we'll see that the signature input is t, and then our 
um, you know, this argument pack right here, and it says what t is. So in this case, it's templated. So it go ahead and deduces a type to integer, and the inputs are all integers, right? And it does this again. So the next recursive call, it peels off another integer, and all of a sudden we only have three. Peels off another integer, we have two, and then peels off another integer, we only have, you know, the first, and then we have uh, the rest of the arguments. And then lastly, it calls the base case, right? So this is just the adder t that takes only a single argument, right? And it returns that. And we see that um, in the case of floating point, it actually promotes it to a double, right? Or a double precision number. Uh, so it goes, we see that it goes ahead and goes down, goes down, goes down uh, until we get to the base case where we call the uh, base case function uh, with, with just a single uh, argument, right? And it returns that argument, adds it all together, and we get 17.5. And then likewise, uh, we see that it looks a bit messier once we start using a bit more complex of data types. So in this case, a string, which you can think of as, you know, a special case of a vector. But you see that, you know, in this case, it says what first is going to be, which is this standard CXX11 basic string of characters, right? Uh, and then the other arguments will all be the same, you know, standard CXX11 uh, basic string. And, you know, this will continue on for the rest of the arguments. Uh, in this case, right, so there's only three total arguments, so it'll get called twice before we get to the base case, right? Well, we'll just return a single string right here, right? So that's the basics of, um, you know, variotic templates. These things can be very powerful, and, you know, a lot of times they can be really, really useful in our code uh, and making our code flexible, right? Instead of having to, you know, manually check how many arguments we have, we can just put in an arbitrary number of arguments, and it'll handle it no matter what. So. Let's show off the flexibility a little bit more. So let's let's go ahead and comment out a pretty function again. And you see we can, you know, add more arguments to this and it'll handle it just fine. So we can add, you know, six, seven, even eight there. We'll go ahead and recompile it as well. G plus plus, and we'll run it again. And we see that now we get an integer sum of 36, right? So we didn't have to change anything about our code. We just called the function with a different number of input parameters. All right, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. It's basics of variotic templates. Uh, go ahead and check out any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. We've got stuff on CUDA programming, so that's GPU programming, uh, Python stuff, um, the current book that we're working on called the Tour of Programming, uh, some stuff on C++ data structures and uh, algorithm comparisons. So we looked at C++ Crash Course, though, and if we go to Fundamental Concepts, then under Templates, we've got Variotic Templates over here. So feel free to check this out. I'll play around with it. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.